Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey, one good vibrations at your service to talk about something called a capacitance hat. Uh, these uh, devices are commonly used for vertical antennas, uh, and uh, they're used in particular when you want to make a vertical antenna shorter than it would have to otherwise be physically in space. What, what I've drawn here is a ground mounted quarter wavelength vertical antenna. You see down below the uh, connected to the shield of the coax down here the you see these radial wires. These are buried radials so you get a very good earth ground. The vertical radiator one quarter of a wavelength long electrically connected to the center conductor of your coaxial cable going to your radio and again the shield of your cable is grounded generally it would be grounded right there at the feed point should uh, the ground rod should be driven into the earth at the feed point and then the radial wires running out from there for at least a quarter of a wavelength you can bury them you can lay them on the surface although I don't recommend laying them on the surface and uh, so you have a quarter wavelength vertical antenna. Now suppose that you uh, design this thing for, you want to design this thing for a frequency of 3.525 megahertz in the CW portion of the 80 meter amateur radio band. You're going to find that that thing's going to need to be about 66 feet tall in order to produce a electrical quarter wavelength if it's a full-size antenna without any inductive loading or anything like that. Now you can place a loading coil somewhere along this radiator, preferably near the center somewhere, and make that thing shorter. But there's another way you can do that too. If you're, if you're constrained by how high you can make that thing, you'll probably have to put guy wires on an antenna this tall. Uh, I guess they can make them 66 feet tall without guy wires but it has to be pretty heavy aluminum tubing and if you live in a wind prone area it probably blow down probably bend that tubing over on you if you tried something like that so you may need you probably need to guy wire place guy wires or guy cords nylon cords roughly in the center of the thing well suppose that instead what you decided to do was to bend this thing over and make an inverted L out of it. You could very easily do that and still have the total length be 66 feet. The trouble is, how are you going to get this L horizontal? Are you, are you going to have two supports? Like you could run it up for 33 feet and then over for 33 feet and then have another 33 foot support over there. But there's another trick that you can use and it's very interesting. Suppose that you decided that in fact you did want to make that thing 33 feet tall. So you went ahead and did that. You made this this thing 33 feet tall. Now it's going to be resonant on 7 megahertz. You place a loading coil right there, and then you construct what they call a capacitance hat. What that basically is, is it's like a, a bunch of aluminum tubing spokes connected at the outside, maybe six of them or eight of them, connected at the outside together to hold them in place by hose clamps and aluminum grounding wire. So these are aluminum spokes, aluminum tubing spokes. Say maybe you'd make them, uh, you get 10 foot lengths or 10 or 12 foot lengths of aluminum tubing and, and put them in the center crossing over. You figure out some way to combine them in the center. The radius then would be five or six feet of this whole thing. So you have kind of a disc that has maybe a radius of, let's just say for all argumentative porpoises, five foot radius. Then you figure out what the value of this inductor needs to be in order for that thing to function properly. 
I don't know exactly what it would be. You'd have to find out by experiment. Now, you guy wire this thing from maybe t 22 feet up or so. 20 feet up using nylon cords. Now you have an antenna only 33 feet high, but it's resonant on 3.525 megahertz because of the coil and the capacitive loading effect of this hat. Interesting. Now another benefit of this is that this coil at 7 megahertz is going to serve as a radio frequency choke. It's going to serve as a radio frequency choke at 7 megahertz, but that 33 foot height will, will radiate as a quarter of a wavelength at 7 megahertz. So you have a two band antenna. You have a 40 and 80 meter uh, vertical antenna, a dual band antenna. Uh, without any traps, you do have that loading coil right here. But that's your benefit. You get a two band antenna. Now this is just one example of how this trick can work. Capacitance hats. The neat thing about a capacitance hat, uh, a good uh, thumb of rule, as one of my old art colleagues uh, said when I lived in South Beach, Miami, a good thumb of rule. She was from Hungary and she sometimes twisted English expressions around into very clever phrases like that. A good thumb of rule is that the, when you have a, a capacitance hat that has a radius of something like five feet, that's the equivalent of extending that antenna up vertically by twice that distance more. So it would be like extending it up 10 feet. So you could make this the equivalent of extending the antenna up, uh, say, uh, another 33 feet if you were willing to make the radius of this thing about 16 and a half feet, and then you wouldn't need the loading coil at all, and you'd have an antenna with a considerably greater bandwidth than the original 66-foot vertical, but only half as high. And you could make that capacitance hat by uh, guying the antenna from the top, placing insulators at the points where the radius is uh, 17 feet, 16 and a half feet, and connecting them with spokes around like that. So that's another trick you can use. Uh, capacitance hats, uh, very interesting. I recommend you get the ARRL antenna book. They probably talk about these things. I don't have the latest edition of it. Or you can just Google on capacitance hats and get some ideas for designs. But the best thing that I can recommend that you do, and that I always like to do, is roll your own. Try everything. If you throw enough paint at a wall, some of it's going to end up looking really cool on that wall. The trick is that you just got to keep throwing that paint. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, Whiskey One. Good vibrations, saying 73, and so long for now.